Hi there, this is Gist Nigeria. Coming up on the program. Celebrating Women's History Month, we highlight challenges Nigerian women face and share tangible solutions. And uterine fibroids. We look at how fear and expensive treatments prevent women from getting help. Also, painting for a cause. The self-taught shackle artist using our art to represent issues affecting women. Plus, my name is Chioma Tolani Roberts. Check me out. The entrepreneur empowering women and young people in the agricultural value chain. Welcome to Gist Nigeria from the BBC and Channels Television. If you're a woman or girl watching me right now, then this episode is dedicated to you as we continue to celebrate Women's History Month. I'm Ajoke Hulotse. Let's start with our top story this week. Despite the many strides Nigeria has taken on different fronts since independence, it seems gender equality still poses a problem. Today, some of the country's popular societal norms and values are still hugely patriarchal, denying women some privileges and rights. In this report, just Nigeria's Wali Fakile highlights some issues affecting women and spoke with some individuals who are creatively turning the tide. Have a look. It's an age-long proposition now being swept away in the sands of time. All around the world, things are changing and are still changing. And in Nigeria, women are breaking all types of glass ceilings from the boardroom to the bubbling and busy streets. But it's not yet rural. The emerging global consensus is that despite these giant strides, gender equality is still a mirage in many countries. Women and girls still work more and earn less, have fewer choices, and still experience all forms of violence and abuse. In 2020, a UN report said 90% of men and women hold some sort of bias against females. Here in Nigeria, women make up about 49% of the population, but still don't have the same rights as men in many areas of life. What this connotes is that Nigerian men and women are not actually equal. Section 26, subsection 2A of the 1999 Constitution gives the right of citizenship to any woman who marries a Nigerian man, but not to a man who marries a Nigerian woman. Uh, this has been described as discrimination of women's national rights. Sadly, we women have also um, somewhat not pushed the case uh, long enough. Uh, for it to be overturned. It's very unthinkable that at a time like this, whereas a man can marry a woman from anywhere in whatever country, under whatever circumstances, and then that woman naturally inherits his, um, his status or background from wherever he comes from. The same cannot be said of, of women. And these are issues that should be um, should be inserted into the constitution because of course if you are making a, a provision available for a it means that it should be available for b and there should not be any discrimination whatsoever nigeria has one of the highest cases of child marriage in the world unicef says more than 40 percent of women in the country marry before their 18th birthday and this is backed by the law Section 29, subsection 4B of the amended 1999 constitution says any woman who is married would be seen as an adult. In 2003, the federal government adopted the Child Rights Act, which makes child marriage illegal and minimum age for marriage to be 18. They held me down as the man slept with me. After that, I fell pregnant, but was too young to be pregnant. I wasn't even 12 years old. The Child's Right Act was passed at the national level um, for it to take effect. It also has to go down to the state, um, to the state level. And so uh, the reason why it's still happening as well is because many states out of the 36 states of the country have not uh, passed the Child's Right Act in, at the state level. The solution to child marriage, first of all, is the address of the issue of poverty. Let me tell you something. There's no social investment in Nigeria, so you can't measure social impact. 
if you have social investment, then you are going to be looking at social protection. Things like provision of basic amenities of life. They treat the children of those who have been given out and the children of wars of wood and drafts of water. The children of the oil the people that transfer not called the wretched of the earth. If those are the people being given out, then we must trace it to the root cause which is poverty. In many Nigerian cultures, married women are seen as their husband's property. And when the husband dies, the wives are subjected to all kinds of treatments that violate their human rights. Some are made to swear oaths and do other horrific things just to prove they are not responsible for the man's death because they are deemed the first suspects. Conversely, men are culturally not meant to show sadness or emotions in the public when their wives die. Yeah, I lost my wife some years ago, and uh, I, I, could, I, could I stay at, stay at home more than three days one week? I have to go out and know how to fend for the kids. But a woman, whatever, she has to be at home and I don't know, so maybe that's, that's the tradition. Culture is really about the people, so in, most people would argue that you know the, gov the government of the day really has no say in what really represents the culture, which is the way of life of the people. I would also really admonish our traditional rulers to, to, to reconsider some of these age-old practices that continue to dehumanize and debase womanhood. These things don't belong in today's world. Education is key to um, helping women to overcome this uh, cultural practices. It's also important for role models within our communities, women role models within our communities, to come out and, and, and be um, perfect examples to, girl, to, to other girl child, to the other girl um, children within the communities that they come from. Renting an apartment is a terrifying experience for many single women. Some property owners demand they bring a man to prove they are responsible. This is because quite a number of landlords believe a woman should remain with her parents until she gets married. This is absolutely not the case for men. So I wanted to rent apartment around Agege side. So when we got there that exact day, the woman was like, no, she can't give an, any apartment to any single lady. That's me special, that is allowed, but any single lady that she's not accepting, except I'm coming with my parents or my fiancé. So I was like, I don't have any fiancé, I don't have anybody. I just want to come and stay here for the main time. Constitution says nobody will be discriminated against based on sex, based on any form of um, status stated in the Constitution. So you shouldn't tell me that I need to be married to be able to rent a place. It's really offensive, not only to the person, it is offensive to the legal system of Nigeria. If in the 21st century we still have this um, persistent um, um, discrimination. It is really offensive and it is good and that is what I said. I said it is good for us to test the law and see what the courts we have to say on this. Culture is one of the major reasons family planning in the country fails. In many parts of Nigeria, as a man who decides if his spouse would use contraceptives. To top it all, the burden of planning the family is mostly on the woman. Some men are not even aware there are a lot of options in terms of male contraceptive methods. I have a friend that tied her womb after childbirth. So now, she doesn't have a womb to give birth again. So she's facing that, but the husband does not want to face that. He always said the woman should do it, the woman should do it, which is wrong. I kick against everything that presents a woman as as less that presents a woman as, as as somebody who has to bear the brunt of everything including family planning i think how it should be is that family must be able to have a conversation as to how many children they want to have it's the 21st century and gender roles are continuing to blur women are much more than caregivers and homemakers today they have broken into fields thought to be an exclusive preserve of men. The next step would be to attain true equality in the real sense between both genders. And that task is a collective one. Wale Fakile, Just Nigeria.
sector equality is indeed very achievable. So, what issues have you confronted as a woman in Nigeria, and how did you manage them? Share your stories with us on our Twitter handle at TV. We'll be glad to read from you.